lesson in our decimals unit, we are going to be looking at dividing decimals. And just like we did for multiplying decimals, before we can, before we actually do the division problem, we're going to look at what it actually means to divide by decimal and what our answer actually means. And so we're going to set it up somewhat like we did fractions and looking at how many groups go into the number. And we're also going to use our base 10 blocks like we did for multiplying decimals to help us figure out the answers. So the first one's until we get the idea of what we're doing. So this first column says 2 and 4 tenths divided by 8 tenths. So if we think back to when we were doing fractions, what this problem is really asking us is how many groups of 8 tenths go into 2 and 4 tenths. That's what we're trying to figure out. Okay? So now let's use our base 10 block to actually physically figure out how many groups of 8 tenths or how many of those 8 rods or longs will go into 2 and 4 tenths. So let's figure that out. Here I have modeled 2 and 4 tenths. And so first thing I'm going to look at is just how many total rods are there? Because 8 tenths is looking at the rods. They're 8 rods. So we're going to kind of pretend that everything is a rod. And so in this case, I have 10 of them. Here I have 10 of them. And here I have 4. So all together, there are 24 of those rods or lungs. Either name works to use those. And so now, instead of thinking about this as a decimal problem, now I've changed everything into rods, and now I just need to know how many groups of those eight rods, which is the same as that eight tenths, go into those 24 rods. So what I'm going to do is put these into groups of eight. Here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this would all be one group going all the way up. And then I'm going to count over another eight. Here would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would be a second group. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So how many groups are there of 24 rods? And there are three. So if you think about this problem, if we look at what happened to the decimals, we got rid of the decimals. But we not we didn't just get rid of them. We switched eight tenths into just eight rods. And since we did that, we also had to change our 22 and 4 tenths into rods, and we moved that decimal point over. So we really moved the decimal point over one on both the dividend and the divider. Let's try another one. Here we have 3 divided by 1 and 2 tenths. So first of all, what does this problem mean? For thinking back to, death, to our fraction unit again, it's saying how many groups of 1 and 2 tenths go into 3. So again, we're going to use our base 10 block to help us figure that out. How many groups of 1 and 2 tenths go into 3? Well, first thing, let's change everything into rods again, because rods are kind of the easiest for us to work with. So here's our 3. That's what we're trying to split in a group. How many rods are there in 3? There's 10, 20, 30. And if we're going to change our first number into rods, let's do the same thing for the second part. How many rods are there in 1 and 2 tenths? Well, here would be 1, that's 10. And we have two more rods, so there's 12. So now this really, this problem is asking us how many groups of 12 rods go into 30 rods. So let's split up our 30 into groups of 12. Here we would have 10 plus two more would give us 12. Here we have 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then here we're left over with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have two full groups. I'm going to write that part down. And then we have six pieces left, six rods left, and a full group with 12. So if we have six out of 12 pieces, that's like a half a group. And to write half as a decimal, that would be 0.5. So I have two and a half groups of 12 in our 30 rods. So again, what do you notice about the decimal points in this problem? Well, we change 3 into 30. We change 1 and 2 tenths into 12 we move the decimal point over 1. That's actually what's happening when we're working with decimals and dividing. What we want to do is take the number that we're trying to make into groups, or our number that we're using to figure out the size of our groups, and to get rid of that decimal point. And whatever we do to one part of our problem, we need to do to the other part. So here's what we're going to do. First, to write this as a division problem, we're going to write the first number on the inside of our long division sign. So 22 and 4 tenths. And we're going 
then divide that, we're going to put it into groups of 800. Now, just like when we were working with our base 10 blocks, instead of thinking about this as hundreds and thousands, let's think of them as rods and, and pieces. So in this case, to get rid of the decimal, to change it into our base 10 pieces, we'd have to move it over one, two spots. And if I move my decimal over two spots in, on one part of the number, or one part of the problem, we need to do the same thing to the other part. So I'm going to move it over two spots, add in some zeros. For me, I don't like to have it like that. It looks kind of cluttered with all of my lines drawn in. So I'm just going to rewrite this problem as now 2,240 divided by 8. The nice thing is now we're not even working with decimals at all. And it's just a regular division problem. So how many times is 8 going to 22? That would be 2 times. That would give us 16. And we'll subtract. 2 doesn't go into 6, so I'm going to borrow from over here. This becomes 12. 12 minus 6 is 6. 1 minus 1 is 0. So I'm going to pull down this 4. 8 goes into 64 8 times. That would be 64. Subtract those and get 0. And we still got another 0 to work with. 8 goes into 0, 0 times. 8 times 0 is 0. And we're left with 0, no remainder. So our answer would be 208. So basically, when we're working with decimals and dividing, we're going to rewrite the problem using the long division symbol. And we're going to have the first number, which is the divisor, or the dividend, and put that on the inside. And then we're going to take the divisor, what, we're, what size our groups are going to be, put that number on the outside. Then we move, need to move our decimal point over, so we have no decimals on the outside of the problem. And however many spots we move it on the outside, we're going to do the same on the inside. And then add zeros as we need to. For me, I like to rewrite the problem, this so it's easier to look at, no clutter. And then just solve it like a regular division problem. Trying another one. Let's try this first one right here. We have 5 and 2,500 divided by 3 tenths. So again, we're going to write it using the long division symbol. 5 and 2,500 divided by 3 tenths. We don't want any numbers to the right of the decimal, so we're going to move the decimal over one on the outside, and we're going to do the same thing on the inside. In this case, we can see that we're still going to have a decimal point, and that's okay. So for me, I'm going to rewrite this problem. So now I really have 52 and 5 tenths divided by 3. And right now, I'm going to put my decimal point right up there so I remember where it goes because just like adding and subtracting now, I'm going to line my decimal point up. And so now it's just a regular division problem. I don't have to worry about my decimal point because I already put it in the problem or in my answer. So now I have 3. How many times does it go into 5? It goes in there once. That would be 3. And we'll subtract. 5 minus 3 is 2. Carry down that 2. 3 goes into 22 7 times. 3 times 7 is 21. 22 minus 21 is 1. Carry down that 5. 3 goes into 15 5 times. 3 times 5 is 15. So we're going to subtract 15 and get 0. So 5 and 2,500 divided by 3 tenths equals 17 and 5 tenths. We can try out those other ones, but it's going to be that same process. Just remember, when you're dividing decimals, put the first number inside of your long division sign. The second number will go on the outside. To get rid of all the decimals on the outside, you're going to move the decimal point to the right until the decimal point is on the far right of the number, so in this case, once. And however many spots you move on the outside, you're going to move it that many spots on the inside. So in this case, between the 2 and the 5. For me, I then rewrite the problem put that decimal point in where it needs to go, and then treat it just like a regular division problem.